Okay, are there any questions? My computer is gonna be a little slow for a few minutes. I'm still, what do they call that? I'm still working on the lecture. I mean, my computer is still making the lecture tape or movie. Um, it's still working, so uh, it's still running. It used to finish in 15 minutes, but they did an upgrade several, a few terms ago, and it's taken longer. There it is, convert meeting recording. I guess you can't see that yet, but uh, it's still running. Any questions? Nope. All right. Is that what I'm looking for? Let me look for the other one. Yeah, that's it. No, that's zero one. Ubiquity. Hmm. Oh well, we'll use that one then. I'll just wing it. Hmm. The, uh, Syllabus. Let me share my screen. That's not it. There we go. Uh, this is converting the meeting recording from the lecture. Let's go on. So uh, the class says that we will go from seven to 920, but uh, I don't think we will ever go to 920, meaning that's a little long for the lab. And uh, what we will do is I will talk about the lab and then I will tell you guys to get the lab done. And some of you will do it over Zoom and then you can ask me questions because I'll stay on uh, the Zoom session. But uh, you don't have to stay on and finish the lab at this point, but you can if you do. Uh, anyways, when the last student logs out, I will log out. I will also log out around nine o'clock. So I plan on spending about two hours over Zoom, but I will log out earlier if a student, if all the students log off. Any question about any of that? Uh, as far as I know, I'm the only microbiology instructor who stays online during the lab. And I do this because I wanna be able to help you. Is there any question about that? All right, so I've already talked about all this information and the best way to contact me is to contact me with the Canvas email. We already talked about optional tests and about the policies and suggestions for the class. Our student and instructor responsibilities. Once again, do not plagiarize, do not cheat. You can read about suggested study methods. I've already talked about that. I've already talked about the grading, so I don't see any point on doing it further. Let me point out that the lab is a significant portion of your course grade. The lab counts for the lab assignments. That's 50 points right here. Can you guys see this, my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, the unknown project is a lab grade. The infectious disease project is a lab grade. So a significant amount of the points do come from the lab. And then the quizzes, some of the quiz questions will come from the lab, okay? As well as some of the final questions. 
uh, microscope use, microscope use, you will not be actually handling a microscope. However, you are expected to know the material that we discuss in the lab. And so you do need to know uh, the uh, microscope material. Uh, many of our, we do have some virtual labs, which no longer use flash, that needs to be changed. Oh, well, that's true, it's no longer supported. So let's go ahead and leave that. I'm not gonna change it. Uh, because flash is no longer supported, we don't have those virtual labs anymore. And that means we are down some of our virtual labs. A virtual lab is where you actually do things on the computer that simulates what you would do in the real lab. Like we do have a virtual lab with the microscope and you can use the microscope, like focus a virtual microscope on a slide, which is a virtual slide. And you can look at different virtual slides. You can do different, uh, I don't know, objective lessons, uh, objective lenses. You can look in different areas of the slide. So we do have some virtual labs. Any question about any of that? The point is, you do need to know how to use the microscope. And we will talk about it in the lab. But you're not actually going to be using a real microscope. Any questions about any of that? And that will be true of all of our lab that uh, you need to know the material, but you're not going to do most of it online. You do have to read the material, go over the material, complete a worksheet to uh, show that you've learned the material. Only on a few labs do we have a virtual lab where you can actually practice the lab on the virtual software. And unfortunately, the reason why we only have a few labs that way is we had more, but they all use Flash and Adobe stopped what do you call that? To stop using flash. And so the lab no longer works. Any question about any of that? So a virtual lab that does not use flash, you are required to complete it. All the virtual labs that use flash, we now have them either uh, lined out or they're removed from the uh, lab modules. Safety information for students and physicians. You're not going to be actually exposed to a microorganism. So this information is not terribly important to you. You are expected to participate in the following COVID-19 mitigation efforts when you go on campus. However, this lab and lecture are going to be all online. So you don't even need to worry about that. All right, let's go on. You should probably know that students who are immunocompromised or living or caring with an immunocompromised individual, or if you're pregnant or planning on getting pregnant, uh, you should take special precautions in the microbiology lab. You should know that, but you won't be <laughs> practicing it because you won't actually be handling microorganisms. But you should know it because these students need to take precaution to make sure they don't get the microorganism or take the microorganism to someone who is immunocompromised. And only rarely did we have a student do that. And what I would do is I would give them only bacteria to work with 
that I felt were safe bacteria. Okay. Uh, and obviously that's not a concern for an online class, but you do need to know that that is a concern for a normal microbiology lab. Uh, you can read about the biosafety level. I think there's one quest quiz question on the biosafety level, what it is. And um, there was a movie, I forget the name of it, Infection or something like that, starting, oh, I can't remember his name, Martin something, but uh, Outbreak, I think it was that. And they would show you what biosafety level one was which is normally what we do in the microbiology lab. You just clean the lab area, the surface area before you work. And then after you're done, you just clean it. And obviously you wash your hands before you leave the lab as well. Um, that's biosafety level one. Biosafety level two is a little more risky and you do have the same things where you clean your hands before and afterwards, you clean the lab before and after you work, but you be very careful with biosafety level two organisms because they can cause human disease. Not serious human disease. It would be something like Shigella, which would be serious if you got it, but it doesn't necessarily kill you. Um, Streptococcus pyogenes, which causes strep throat. Staphylococcus aureus, which causes a skin infection. Okay, not life-threatening diseases, but they do cause human disease. Uh, and then there's biosafety level three, and that's when you uh, have uh, your gear on, like a mask and uh, goggles. You don't usually have a breathing apparatus, but you do have a mask on. You have gloves on with biosafety level three. You have a gown that you put on. And the idea is you then take that off before you leave so that everything that you've been exposed to stays in the lab. And then biosafety four level, you walk into or you suit up with a, a gear that's totally enclosed. And it may have a tube giving you oxygen, but the point is, or you carry the oxygen tank, that you're totally closed from the environment. You're almost wearing like a space suit. And that's to prevent the microorganisms from getting at you. Well, that would be biosafety level four. A words of advice and comfort. Let me tell you once again, I am here to help you. So if you have a concern or a problem, please let me know. I will work my best to help you. That doesn't mean that I'm not gonna lower my standards. We do have to have standards to uh, ensure, what, that the grade means something. Make sure that you learn something from taking microbiology but I will try to help you. Uh, you should learn about the lab safety rules. I'll go through them now. We normally go over this in the first lab and this is the first lab. You're not physically going to meet in the microbiology lab. However, that was the uh, lecture uh, lesson just recording, it, it just finalized. We're not going to be physically going in the lab, but you do need to learn about it. Safety is one of the main skills that you will learn in microbiology. So safety is of prime importance in the microbiology lab. Never take shortcuts. Always follow the procedures that you've been taught not only for accuracy, but to ensure the safety of you, the environment, and the other students in the lab. No personal items are allowed into the microbiology lab. Anything you bring into the lab must stay in the lab, and you cannot take it out 
until it has been sterilized. That is usually meaning that it'll be dunked in bleach for something like 15 minutes or some other disinfectant for 15 minutes, or it would be autoclave. Autoclave is uh, like putting something in a pressure cooker for 15 minutes. So if you were to take your personal phone out and put it on the lab bench, I would grab it and say, this has to be disinfected. You're not getting it back until it's disinfected. And guess what? Putting it in the disinfectant or putting it in the autoclave will destroy it. But you could take something like a pencil into the lab and you could take it out after it's been disinfected. So all personal items do not come into the lab. What you would do is you would come into the door and the door and the cubby holes where you put your belongings, like your coat and your backpack. And if you have a purse, your purse, put them in the cubby hole and they stay there. The cubby hole and the door are not considered part of the lab. It's considered outside the lab. Every other place in the lab is considered inside the lab. And none of your personal belongings go inside the lab. Anything that goes inside the lab stays there until it's disinfected. And generally, the only thing that students would ever bring into the lab would be something like paper, maybe a notebook that they're prepared to leave in the lab and uh, a writing utensil like a paper or, I mean, a pencil or a, uh, a pen. And generally they just leave all that stuff in the lab. And then all the other things are left in the cubby hole. And then the students would go and wash their hands they then go and put on their lab coat. They then go and put on their gloves. And if they're working with a splash hazard that day or a safety hazard that may splash into their eyes, they would also put on goggles. Any question about any of that? And then they would go to their workspace and they would wash down their surface of the work area. And then they would do their lab. And then when they're all done, they would put away their materials and then wash, which is disinfecting the surface area where they were working. And then they would take off their lab coat. Well, I suppose first they would take off their goggles if they had goggles on. And if they didn't have goggles on, and then they'd take off their lab coat. And then they would take off their gloves. Or you could take off the gloves first and then the lab coat. And then they would go wash their hands. And then they would grab their books and their belongings. And then they would leave the lab. And that was the policy that we did when we met in the lab. Students would come in, put all their stuff, belongings in the cubby hole, wash their hands, put on their lab coat, put on gloves. If they needed goggles, they'd put on goggles. And then they would disinfect their work area. And then in the, at the end of the day, they would do the reverse. And then they would leave. And that was to make sure that nothing no microorganisms would be taken home with them. So what did they do with their notes? If they wanted notes and a copy of it, what they'd have to do is take a picture of it and then email the picture to themselves. And you could take several pictures. And we did have uh, uh, laptops, iTops, whatever they're called, in the lab to do that. I any question about any of that? All right. So all culture should be considered potentially pathogenic. Keep hands, pencils, and other materials out of your mouth, ears, nose, etc. 
no eating, drinking, smoking, gum chewing, or any other oral habit is allowed in the lab. You are required to wear gloves. You should check yourself to make sure you don't get sick from a microorganism. Students must wear closed-toed shoes at all times in the lab. So there are some lady who have fancy shoes where the toes are open. Those are not allowed. Sandals and thongs are not allowed. And the reason is if you spill something, we want the minimum protection of a closed-toed shoe to protect you from the microorganisms, okay? Tennis shoes don't give you much protection, but they give you some, and that was allowed. Any question about any of that? All right, whenever you worked with a broth, a liquid culture, or any other splash hazard, you had to wear goggles. The goggles were supplied by the lab. So were the gloves. And most of the lab coats were supplied by the lab, although a few students did buy lab coats. And then they brought them. And if they wanted to take them home, they would have to wait until the end of the term and they would be washed. Let me think about that. They'd be autoclaved and then they'd be washed and then they'd be dried, and then the students could pick them up. Cleanliness is a virtue in the microbiology lab. Like I said, you always clean your hands and the lab bench before and after you're done. And the same with your hands. You should report all accidents to an instructor. A minor accident should be cleaned up as the following. If broken glass is involved, first um, disinfect the area with disinfectant and let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Then pick up the broken glass with a dustpan and a broom and put it in the broken glass container. Spilled acid and patients should be diluted and wiped up. Spilled bacterial uh, cultures, uh, like I said, are disinfected. Cover it with a paper towel to spread the disinfectant everywhere. Let it soak for 15 minutes, then wipe it up using dry paper towels and discard all of that material in the biohazard trash can. Mouth by petting is not allowed. Keep your hair away from the bacto incinerators. We didn't have open flame. Never take a culture out of the lab. That's a microorganism. If you had a cut or sore on your hand, you should wash your hands, apply a Band-Aid, and then put the glove over the Band-Aid. All microbiological cultures must be labeled completely. We'll go over this one more time in a future lab, but you always put your name, the date, the nature of the specimen, meaning what it is, and then the medium used. It's also optional. You can put the temperature that you're growing the microorganism. All specimens must be discarded in the following ways. Auger plates, they have auger in them. They're plastic petri dishes uh, are uh, uh, put in the biohazard container. Uh, the exception would be if there's no microorganisms in them, then they could go in the trash can. But if there's microorganisms growing in them, you put them in the biohazard container. Glass slides and cotton swabs should be put in a glass container containing disinfectant. And we have those found around the rear of the lab and they'll be labeled for slides or swabs. Pipette should go in the appropriate uh, pipette container. Test tubes go in the test tube uh, holder. It's just a rack near the front of the lab. 
well, I guess the back of the lab, because that would be the way you're facing away from. So the back of the lab. And uh, uh, you must remove all tape from the uh, test tubes. And what we'll do with those test tubes is we'll autoclave them, wash them, and then reuse them. The same with glass slides. I don't think I've mentioned that. You put those in a container containing disinfectant in the container for glass slides. The cover slips we do not reuse, and those would go in the cover slip container containing disinfectant. Supplies are found at the front of the lab. Students would be assigned in pairs, and they'd have a drawer in a pair. All right, so you're already required to follow all of these rules. Do you have any question about the rules that I've discussed? All right, there's no questions that I hear, so I assume everyone's good. Like I said, you do need to know about these rules because for one thing, you should learn them. You're taking microbiology, so you should learn these rules and you will be quizzed on them. All right, so today we're gonna to be covering lab zero zero, lab safety training. You must turn this assignment, the worksheet, by 8 a.m. Friday morning. I will take attendance from who turns in the worksheet. And if you're not turning it in, you will be dropped from the class. Any questions about any of that? Can somebody please say no? Got it. All right, thank you. I was going to stop my share to make sure the student's still there. All right. Uh, next Thursday, that's in two days' time, we'll then do lab one, the ubiquity of microorganisms. Please understand the online plagiarism tutorial and the online plagiarism quiz must be finished at 11.59 p.m. Saturday, July 9th. We must achieve 100% on the plagiarism quiz, but you can take it five times. So don't wait to the end to take the plagiarism quiz, because if you miss a quiz question, you can just retake the same quiz. Although I think the answers change position. They may even change letters, like what used to be B could change the number A, but it's the same quiz. And then you can take the quiz five times. You must achieve 100% on the plagiarism quiz or where's the assignment? The uh, infectious disease project, you will get zero out of 100 on it. So please get 100% on the plagiarism quiz. Any question about any of that? All right, no questions. Let me briefly show you the lab. So come to the Canvas class, scroll down to the lab week one. There's lab module one, laboratory safety. Let me make sure that that's the correct link. I remember Last term, it was the incorrect link. And uh, yeah, laboratory safety. All right, that's good. I'm not going to talk about that from uh, Canvas, so I'll talk about it on my computer. Uh, any questions about any of that? Anyway, there's lab module zero, zero. When you're done going through it, click on this link. It'll give you the worksheet. Answer the questions in the worksheet. Oh, I guess you gotta click twice, go there.
And the uh, worksheet, well, it's not showing up well. Uh, you can ignore the first page because these questions aren't showing up correctly. If you just look at look at it online, if you print it out, you'll actually see the questions. And I don't understand why it prints out and you can't see the questions on the computer. So you can ignore the first page and just answer the questions on page two. It's the same questions on page one. I've just printed them out for you. Uh, so it says, ignore the above. Here's the lab safety word scramble. Fill in each asterisk. So rule one has four asterisks. You must add four answers. And lab, what do you always wear for safety before you enter the lab? And students frequently tell me, oh, I've got to wear gloves. I've got to wear lab coats. And I'll tell you that's the incorrect answer because you don't wear those before you enter the lab. And rule two, after you enter the lab, you have to put on gloves and a lab coat. And that's what you do after you enter the lab, okay? But for rule one, what are some things that you put on for safety? Most of you put it on all the time and you don't even think about it. Okay, you guys can try and get the answers. Because nobody's guessing, I'm not gonna help you. All right. Uh, anyways, this is the worksheet. Uh, type in your answers on the worksheet and then submit it. Let me see if I can back up. It's not allowing me to back up. here. No. Nope. You'll have a button either on the right up here, top right, or on the bottom to submit your document, either down here or up on the right. And uh, submit it. And remember, this has to be done by Friday at 8 a.m. or you will be dropped from the class. Any question about any of that? All right, if not, let's talk about lab module 00, laboratory safety. Uh, because you're gonna be doing this online, you do not, excuse me, know all of the material here, but many of the rules are relevant during your careers and you will be quizzed on them. Primary learning objectives for lab module 00. Upon successful completion of this lab, students should be able to distinguish between safe and unsafe laboratory practices. Understand where relevant lab, uh, laboratory safety equipment is located in the lab. Understand how to safely dispose of material, uh, contaminated materials. You are expected to observe a number of safety rules as you're working in the lab, microbiology lab. You're not actually gonna work in the lab, but we do want you to know these laboratory safety rules. So it's important for you to understand the guidelines required to create a lab safe. Some things, wear proper attire, which is shown in figure one, which includes a clean lab coat that covers your lap when sitting, disposable glove, closed toed shoes. And if you're working with a splash hazard, you wear goggles. Let's go take a look at lab picture one. Lab coat, closed toed shoes, gloves. Uh, this person doesn't have goggles, I don't think, but. Uh, Maybe they do. I can't tell if those are glasses or goggles. 
Oh, boy, that didn't work. Let me try that again. No, those look like glasses. So they're not working with a splash hazard. And then uh, lab coats, goggles, and gloves must be removed before leaving the lab. And they're always left in the lab. You don't reuse the gloves, but we do reuse the goggles. They are uh, treated, sterilized with UV light between use. And then the lab coats, you will reuse the same lab coat all term long, but only you are using that lab coat. Any question about any of that? And they are always uh, sterilized before you begin the lab, meaning before you begin the term, and then they're sterilized at the end of the term. They're autoclaved and then they're washed and dried. Or are they washed and then autoclaved? They're autoclaved first. Long hair should be tied back to prevent fire hazard. Absolutely new food or drink in the lab or any use of electronics. No personal items are allowed in the lab. And if anything is brought into the lab, you will not get it back until it has been sterilized. I'm talking about the lab proper, as I mentioned, the lab door and the cubby holes is considered external to the lab and all personal items should remain in the cubby holes. Keep your work area clean and uncluttered. Always disinfect the lab station where you work at the beginning of the lab and at the end before you leave. And this is an actual picture of our lab on the right here. Discard waste in the appropriate receptacles, regular trash, that has no contamination, meaning no bacterial contamination, goes in the uh, garbage can. And regular trash cannot have any sharp objects, uh, like needles, which we don't use in microbiology, as well as anything that's glass. So anything that's glass does not go in the trash can. Um, Gloves, if they have no contamination, meaning you don't think you picked up any bacteria on them, can go in the trash can. If you think you may have contaminated them with bacteria, throw them away in the autoclave bed. And that would be the biohazard container. And I call it the autoclave bag because what we'll do with this is we'll take it, the bag of it, put it in the autoclave to disinfect it, and then we'll discard it. So it's both called the biohazard container and the autoclave bag. Uh, sometimes it's called the, well, we'll call it the biohazard bag. That includes anything that is contaminated with bacteria, but is not glass. If you have glass, anything that's glass, you do not put it in the biohazard bag. Any question about that? So glass would be swabs, well, not swabs, uh, that's uh, cotton and, uh, I don't know, cotton and cardboard, I guess. That would go in the swab container. The slides go in the slide container. The cover slips go in the uh, cover slip container. We will reuse the slides. They will be washed, well, probably autoclave, washed, and then, um, dried and then put somewhere for somebody to use. The cover slips we do not reuse. They're put in disinfectant and then they're put in the broken glass container. And I don't know, that's taken away with broken glass. Uh, the swabs we put in disinfectant and then they're taken out of the disinfectant and then they're, uh, that will destroy the bacteria. They're then uh, uh, discarded. Any question about any of the uh, materials. 
So everything has its appropriate place. And let me emphasize no glass in the biohazard container or in the trash can. Uh, I guess you do work with uh, test tubes and test tubes go in the test tube container, which is just a rack for holding the test tubes. And they will be autoclaved and then uh, washed and then reused. Very seldom do we have glass containers and they go next to the test tubes. Generally, students don't ever have a glass container. Report all spills and accidents immediately, no matter how slight, cover the microbial spills with a uh, uh, paper towel and then saturate the paper towel, let it disinfect for 15 minutes and then wipe it up and then throw it in the biohazard uh, trash container, meaning the biohazard container. If there's broken glass here, you disinfect it and then remove the broken glass with uh, a, uh, a broom and the dustpan and put the glass in the broken glass container. The other material you put in the biohazard container, if you can separate the two. If you can't separate the two, just put it in with the broken glass. Uh, goes without saying, uh, handle the chemicals appropriately. Don't pour them down the sink or in the trash container. Always find where they're supposed to go. In general, in the lab, we tell you. Uh, no mouth pipetting, no chewing your nails. You have gloves on, so you couldn't do that anyways. We don't have an open flame. We have a back to incinerator, and you put the tools that you work with in the back to incinerator and that will sterilize that's a loop there it would sterilize the loop and then you can pick up microorganisms with the loop and we'll talk a little bit more about that but this is showing you a back to incinerator uh, whenever you're not using the back to incinerator it should be turned off and at the end of the lab it should be turned off Generally, at the beginning of the lab, if you think you're going to use the back to incinerator, turn it on because it does take five minutes before it gets red hot. You should be familiar with the location of lab safety equipment. And I'm just going to tell you, you should know what the lab safety equipment is because you're not gonna go into lab, you won't know where it's located. A fire alarm, uh, a fire hose, a fire blanket, which uh, I'm not seeing that here, but we do have a fire blanket in the lab. So if someone's on fire, you could put the fire blanket around them. Uh, a first aid kit, which is actually over that location. A shower, which you could, if you were on fire, you could, with the person who's on fire under the shower. This could also be if you got uh, dangerous chemicals on you, you could wash it off. A uh, fire extinguisher, that looks like another fire alarm. Uh, we also have an eye wash station. Oh, there it is there. And then a fire extinguisher. And that's some of the lab safety equipment. You should know what the equipment is we have in the lab. Remember, safety is of primary importance in the microbiology lab. Never take shortcuts. I've already discussed about wearing goggles if there's a splash hazard. Only in the instructor and Clark students are allowed into the lab unless you get instructor permission. Like I did have occasionally, not very often, uh, a student bring in uh, their child, usually an older child, into the microbiology lab. And that's okay as long as you get permission and the child stays away from the microorganisms.
cell phone use is not allowed. Uh, if you were wanting to answer your telephone, your cell phone, meaning you hear it ringing in your backpack, what you'd have to do is take off your gloves, take off your lab coat, and if you have goggles, take off the goggles, go wash your hands, go get your phone, go outside of the lab to talk on the phone. And then when you're done, come back in the lab, put away your phone, wash your hands, uh, put on your lab coat, put on your gloves, and if you have a splash hazard, put on your goggles again. And that would be the procedure if you wanted to leave the lab and then come back, or if you wanted to uh, answer your phone. Any question about any of that? All right, all cultures you're working with in the microbiology lab are considered potentially pathogenic. No eating, drinking, smoking, or gum chewing. You always have to wear gloves. You should monitor yourself for becoming sick from the microorganisms. You should always wear clothed-toed shoes and the lab coat. The lab coat has to be buttoned. Whenever you're working with the splash hazard, that would be a liquid culture containing bacteria. You always have to wear goggles. If ever you're working with chemicals which could splash into your eyes, uh, there was one reagent of the gram stain, you had to wear goggles. Okay. Uh, accidents, I've already talked about how you clean them up. Uh, let's go on one more time on talking about microbial cultures that you have in the lab must be completely labeled with your name or your initials, the date, the nature of the specimen, and then the media used. It's also optional. You can add the temperature you're growing the culture at. Old specimens are discarded in their following way. If it's from an auger plate, it should be uh, in the appropriate label bin, meaning the autoclave bag, if there's cultures in it. Uh, glass slides should be put in the glass slide container, the cotton swab in the cotton swab container, and they're found throughout the lab, especially the rear of the lab. Uh, the cover slips, I think they only had one place near the rear of the lab that you could put the cover slips. My pets near the rear of the lab in the uh, waste bin for used by pets. A glass tu test tubes in the rear of the lab. And what it was, it was, we had buckets there and inside the bucket, we had test tube holders. You put the test tubes in those holders, remove the tape before you put them in the test tube holder. All right, any question about any of this part of the lab? All right, if there's no questions, that's it for lab module 00, laboratory safety. Go ahead and work on the worksheet. And when you're done, submit it. Now remember all of the labs, I will grade it two times. So the first time, if you get something wrong, I'll tell you that this question, which in this one, it could be like rule number two is wrong. Now, let me see if I can show it to you. Rule number two is wrong. So you can redo rule number two and then resubmit the entire lab again. I note that the questions are rule one, rule two, rule three, rule four, rule five, and then it starts with question number two, three, four, and then submit it, that's number five, uh, 8 a.m. Friday. 
Uh, one of the questions, rule number three, is not discussed in the lab module. So you have to look up online, what is a laboratory safety data sheet? So lab or safety data sheet, look up that. And then uh, uh, discuss which each chemical in the lab must have a safety data sheet that describes what? And you have to list one, two, three, four, five different items that the lab safety data sheet describes the chemical. Any question about any of that? All right, if there's no questions, I will be uh, online until nine o'clock. It's a little before eight. Go ahead and start working on the uh, lab. And if I happen to walk away from the lab, um, meaning you don't see me, um, that's because I went to go get something to eat. I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, I'm gonna stop the share so I can stop the recording.